good YouTube, it's your boy, it's your boy, Junebug, and I'm back at it with another YouTube video, y'all. Hey, man, highly request video. You know what's going on, man. Y'all read the title, man. My Vintage Sneaker Collection. I'm gonna show y'all the kicks, man. All the kicks I'm wearing, man. My sneaker collection is pretty light compared to a lot of people, but uh, it's still a healthy amount. To give you some background about myself, man, I am an old school guy. All I listen to is old school music. And I'm a fan of the NBA. I just love, basically love anything vintage. I might have to say, even though I've only been collecting sneakers for about like two years, I think my sneaker collection is one of the most thorough on YouTube. Without further ado, my vintage sneaker collection. I'm also gonna be showing y'all my sneaker collection and shoes that I have that I'm selling as well. And after this video, just hit me up on Instagram or Depop. I have all my listings there of shoes and clothes I, I'm selling as well. I, I sell vintage clothes and shoes. We're gonna start off light, man. We're gonna start off with, with my sandals, man. With some Nike, vintage Nike Air Deschutes. Vintage Nike sandals that I got last year on eBay. It was like $20. This has been a whole process for me. I had no idea about vintage sneakers and about their wearability and everything. When I first got these, the whole sole, the whole joint was coming off and I was super mad. It was only $20. You will see the Nike sign right there. It took me about $20 to repair them. And they're, the person who, who glued these did a really good job. One down. Next, we have these Nike Slam Force basketball shoes. This is my first sneaker I ever I ever purchased that was vintage. This is what, what uh got me in the game. Back then, in like the 90s, these are made in 95. Y'all can see that right here. Back to my point. Nike had a little thing going on where they were branding shoes. Force was for big men and flight was for guards. Um, I guess these were more the material was more durable for big men because, you know, big men take a lot of um, impact, you know, puts a lot of complications on the shoes. So, um, this is probably one of my favorite shoes. They're comfortable and they like, they're durable. And like I said, they, they, I don't have anything to worry about with these because these, I don't really know what this material is, but it's definitely not polyurethane. Nike Slam Force. We are gonna take it to some, some Franklin basketball shoes i had no idea franklin made basketball shoes it was like 30 bucks on ebay and i was like why not why not buy these selling these though you know what i'm saying these aren't really a necessity in my my closet should be 40 bucks bro 40 bucks for these for some vintage sneakers man super durable almost brand new great condition what else we got here you know, you always gotta have a clean white pair of shoes in your, your closet. Something very simple that goes with everything, man. I think they call it Reebok Calabas. You know, they, they're super simple shoes, man. Super simple. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The bottom ain't, ain't, ain't jacked up. I think I bought these for $30. You might see them a little messed up, a little jacked up because I'm a dancer. I dance in all my shoes, y'all. This, this is gonna be the first Example I give to y'all of shoes that are unwearable and cannot be brought back to life. These Avia basketball shoes. Bro. As you can see, front stitched, side is stitched, back is stitched, but the bottom, gone. Completely gone. This is one of the first uh, mistakes I've made in buying sneakers. I had no idea about wearability and Certain shoes can be revived. They look like they were good. Tried them on in my garage. Took about 10 steps and this, the whole back just became mush and just crumbled. These were basketball shoes, one in the 80s. 87. Everything else though was good though. Like I would've wore these. But I really go out to shoes that nobody has. That's the big kick I get out of this. You got everybody wearing designer, everybody wearing you know, the designer is, a, it's not necessarily because of the aesthetic, but because you can't get it. That's why you see all these rappers wearing designer. A lot of these shoes is butt ugly. Balenciagas, they're hideous. 
And that's what rappers do. They boast about what they have, material things they have, right? So this is my flex. Yeah, I messed up buying those. Um, I might as well just throw them away because they're not going to be revived. Can't swap the sole at all. A lot of these shoes that are made with the polyurethane, in order to revive them, you have to take a retro of the shoe. So a uh, later release version of the shoe, if they were later released, you know, like Jordan's. Jordan's come out every five years, I guess. Jordan have been the most consistent brand at having re-releasing shoes. Take the bottom off, the sole, the outsole, the midsole, and put it on the old version. If you're into that, original shoes typically have better materials made on them. Original shoes also look different. If you pay attention to like the slight details of, of original shoes compared to the retro, the toe box, the shape of the shoe, the materials are cheaper. On the original version, it just looked better to me. These are the 1993 Ultra Marine Harachis. The original Ultra Marine Harachi. I bought these last year, being thirsty. I ended up getting these in 11 and a half. A lot of shoes I have are Legends and I could I could fit them, but these run small. So I I really wear a 12, I got these in 11 and a half, and these do not fit me. So mad because they clean to me, they're different. I don't usually wear blue shoes. They got a little orange on them, they got a little teal on them, they're hard to me. Y'all hit me up. Nike Air on the back. Look at the condition, bro. This is good shoes, bro. They just can't fit me, I would not be selling these. Next, everything I got ain't vintage. I necessarily don't even know when is vintage, sorry. I necessarily don't even know that. Shout out to the GOAT, man. He just passed away, man, tragically. Shout out to Kobe, man. Nike Kobe's nine highs. I got these on eBay for like 270, y'all, before he passed away. I can't imagine what, what they would have been after he passed away, but this is the Nike detail Kobe's. This is all fly knit. I think it's flying it. You got the detail right there, signed by Kobe. His ninth signature shoe, and this back here represents the stitches he got. This was the year he tore his Achilles. So Nike did a little accent for him to commemorate that when he tore his Achilles. Uh, yeah, man, shout out to Kobe, bro. Rest in peace to Kobe, rest in peace to Gigi, everybody else in the, the tragedy, bro. I got I'm, I'm glad I got these, man. These, bro. These have to be the best traction I've ever seen on a shoe. The other reason why I got these is because if I'm, if I ever decide to hoop again, I gotta get some from ankle support. I cannot sprain my ankle. So we're gonna take it to somebody else who played in the NBA. Shout out to the greatest dunker of all time. The Nike BB4 shots, y'all. Vince Carter wore these. I'm not sure if this was his first signature shoe. The silver on these, like if you ever see these in person, it's like different from any other shoe. You can tell it's not cheap. I think they just re-retro like a couple months ago, I think. I've ever seen a shoe design like this. I've never seen any other shoe look like this. Next, this is for all my dancing fans out there, all my popping fans. If y'all a fan of Boogaloo Shrimp, Turbo from Breaking, Nike Blazers from 1981. These were dead stock when I bought these. I know a lot of people are into vintage sneakers and they don't wear them. I wear my shoes. Nike Blazers have to be one of the most durable shoes I feel like in history. Never came across a pair of Nike Blazers that weren't wearable. The outsole was rubber and they were stitched inside. So I'm not gonna have any problems with these ever. When I dance in these shoes. These are my laughing shoes, y'all. These or my grills as well. I had to get these for, for shrimp, man. Wanna be just like shrimp when I grow up. <laughs> I got the shoes to match. All I gotta do is, is work on my moves, man. Yeah, these are the DJ AM edition. Um, I got the little, it's in my, I, I didn't bring it. It's in my garage. DJ AM version. I guess he was a DJ back then. He had his own white sneaker. Um, yeah, bro, these is hard to be. I know y'all know who the big ticket is. Shout out to Big Ticket, man. These are not the originals, but they came out nine years later. Kevin Garnett, the Nike Flight Posits. This is another pair I have to sell because I got these at 11 and a half. I just be gambling, man. They're close to my size. I can get them. Let me let me let me try to get them, and they don't fit. 
So it's another case of that, man. You got the laces on the side. I've never seen any other shoe look like this. It, it, like I said, these are, was made and these came out in 1999. And whoever designed these, bro, great, great job. You can see the bottom. See the bottom? What does that say? See the Nike Flight Posit technology. So we're gonna start getting into the Jordans, man. I'm a Jordan fan. I'm not into all the, the colorful Jordans. I'm into the original Jordans. And it's crazy because my mom and MJ actually had the same birthday, 217-63. Rest in peace my mom, man. But it was born on the same day. That's the craziest thing. That's probably why I have some, some type of uh, obsession with Jordan. He had the same birthday as my mom. But hey, man, these are the 1994 Shadow 10s. Uh, these look completely different from the, the retro versions. And I know y'all could tell if you are a fan of Jordans, you could tell by this right here. The upper is like a gray that I don't really like. I like this one because I like this version just because it's a um, it's like a charcoal. It's like a dark charcoal. Newer versions, nah, nah, man, nah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not completely a hater on the newer versions of shoes, but I'm not, a, I'm not a complete hater of retro shoes though, y'all. Look at that twisted. There's, there be some certain shoes that be coming out that be heat, but. For the most part, bro, OG always wins to me. And on these pair of shoes, he had his accolades throughout his career. Let me read them all to y'all. 85, rookie of the year. 86, 63 points. When he did that move against uh, the Celtics with the, uh, the double between the legs. 87, that's when he won the scoring title. 88, dunk contest champion. 89, made the all-defense team. 1999, scored 69 points. I think that's a new career high. Uh, I'm pretty sure they would put it on here for that. Uh, 1991, won the MVP and another championship. 1993, God damn. Just to go back through these accolades, bro, bro was really a problem. This is the three P. He three P it twice. Nobody three P twice. 1992, won another MVP in the championship. 1993, won another MVP in the championship in 1994 is beyond because these came out in 1994. These are not made out of polyurethane, so these are good to last me forever. Next, I know y'all seen White Man Can't Jump. We got the 1991 Command Forces. Timeless shoe. Like I said, going back to what I said earlier about flight and force, this is a shoe made for big men. This is the Force, Force version of the, the Nike line, made in 1990. This is timeless to me. I just love the shape of the shoe. Completely makes shoes to me. This, this shape right here. I think this is the air pump in the back. You used to be able to, to pump these up. That was a part of the technology back then. You could pump them up. <laughs> you could pump them up, I guess it, they would try to say this is make you jump higher, but I know y'all know like the uh, the D Brown Reebok pumps. It was like that, but I guess Nike tried to. I don't I don't know who came out with it first, but I'm pretty sure Reebok came out with that first. But yeah, bro, these are the 1991 Command Forces, man. Great shoes. Got these swapped. It's one of my favorites. We can go back to some Jordans. These are super rare. I have been looking for a pair of 1989 black cement fours for the longest, and I could not find them, so I had to settle for the 1999 version. The 1999 version is the closest thing to the originals. This is going on because the upper part of the shoe is made out of Durabuck, but over time, with this material, it wears off. I actually wanted to keep this look. I like the look at the time. This is the first shoe I've ever seen come off like this. I like to keep it, you know, with a little bit of character. But now I might, might I want to get them, you know. I think this is, this is taken away from the rest of the shoe. Got the Nike Air on the back. Force versus flight. Jordan wore these and he was a part of the flight because he's the guard, so. Flight right there. And he had Air Jordan in the inside of the shoe. 
It's upside down because he would be sitting like this. Show him the Air Jordan on the, in, on the inside, y'all. They'll get this like red stain. I don't know why, but there'll be like a red stain over time. They'll get like a red stain. That's how you know if they're legit or not, or if they're fakes, but you know what I'm saying? Lucked up because I bought these last year, bro. I have not seen a 1999 pair since. So I left up with these. I think Penny Hardaway um, and Nick Van Exel from the Lakers. I think they wore these, but the Nike Air Lamba Stay flight for the guards, y'all. Low top shoe. It's a great shoe. Super 90s. I love it. When I came across these, this was like my second pair of shoes I came across and I bought when I first got into Vits and Sneakers. I just love I just love this little this little small detail. The purple the purple is dope to me. Same material, Durabuck. You see it's coming off. I'm gonna viral on these shoes. The, the rule is, bro, if I go viral on these shoes, bro, I can't ever I can't ever get them up. I don't know why they call it Stack. I don't know. Right, here we go with some more, some more blazers. 1980, some 1980 blazers with the red swoosh. Off-White came out with some blazers that look just like these. I don't know if they're like mimicking because over time these aren't these aren't white anymore. They're like a yellow type beige type color. I don't know if they're called off-white, if this is the correct term, but like they kind of almost mimic this color. They look similar to me. All the old blazers had the rubber come across here. You know what I'm saying? I'm also selling these as well. Nike canvas blazers. If you're a fan of blazers, all the blazers look like this. Even shell toes, shell toe Adidas, they all have this bottom. But the canvas blazer have this this type bottom. It's like a jacket design. Nike Zoom, Flight Five, super clean. I think uh, the bottoms was like the inspiration the designer got was from like turf, turf shoes. I think this is Jason Kidd's first signature. I'm not sure. All I can, all I know for sure. <laughs> all, I, all I know for sure is that it's one of his signature models. This is another shoe I got recently. A lot of sellers don't know what they have. I was like, do you know if the midsole is um, polyurethane or what? and they literally didn't know. So I had to do my research for these and I had to figure out if they were wearable or not. But these are made out of phylon, so I'm good. All I gotta do is get some glue and glue them on and they'll be straight. Over time, you will see the glue from the inside will, will start to crumble and you just gotta re-glue them. This is what the bottom of the shoe look like. You know what I'm saying? Nothing crazy. When I first seen this, I was literally tripping out, but exactly where all the gray parts is, that's where all right, I just got a glue on that. Jason Kidd on the front. Kid, kid, kid from the Bay, man. Shout out to, shout out to Jason Kidd, bro. One of the Bay legends, man. I'm from the Bay too. Super deep. Somewhere, man. We get somewhere, man. We get somewhere. We get somewhere. 1985 Chicago ones, man. One these on eBay. In the bidding. It's classic, bro. I ain't gonna say nothing. It's classic. Classic. See, this is coming off. When I originally got them, this was this was all all black, but. You know, when you wear them, it comes off, man. Michael Jordan's first signature model. This is really just classic, bro. These are probably one of the only shoes that you can wear with anything, literally. You can get away with wearing a tuxedo and wearing these. People know people know these is heat, bro. And what I love about these shoes, you can see the, the aging on the laces. Like, they're not white no more. And I love that. Cause you know they are really from 1985. Air, right there. When I first bought these, I got them from original owner. He told me he used to play basketball in these. So you'll see on these shoes, they're still soft. 
a lot of shoes. I have another pair of um, 85 uh, one, but that pair isn't, isn't even as plush as this one is because when you wear your shoes, when you actually wear your shoes, it's, it, it prolongs the life of the shoe. So it's just super soft up here. Super soft. I have a, um, I have the breads over here. And bruh, these, this, is, this is stiff right here. It's even crumbling on the inside as well, down here. It's real stiff. I'm gonna wear mine. Another, another way you could tell they're from 1985 is up here, this is all rubbed off. This is all rubbed off. I don't know whether I wanna paint them. Yeah, I probably wanna paint them black. So I left up on a good pair. Anytime you come across some shoes from, from that back then, they're they gonna be toe up, bro. Heel drag gonna be crazy. Heel drag ain't that crazy on these, so these got some life. About four pairs left. I'ma save my grails for last. 1987 Nike Air Revolution, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all ain't got these though. Yeah. <laughs> 1987 Nike Revolutions. This was the first Nike basketball sneaker to, to incorporate the Nike Air Zoom. This is the first pair of Nikes to have this, incorporate this technology. That you see on the Jordan 4s, that you see on the Jordan 3s, these came out before the Jordan 3s. The Jordan 3s came out in 1988. Oh, it says 1988 as well. Sometimes they be a year off, I don't know why. Be a year off. As you can see on the bottom, the Jordan 3 bottom look just like this, y'all. It ain't orange though. But yeah, man. Super dope shoe. Got the Velcro. I guess the leather came off, was coming off on this. I gotta get that repainted, but. The Velcro, man, this is, like, this is a dope shoe, bro. It wraps around. Took the missile off of Jordan 3. Cause like I said, they have the same missile. Put it on here. But he kept the outsole. Super dope to me. We're closing in, we're closing in. Three pairs of shoes left. And this is the first shoe I'm showing y'all with the polyurethane issue. Crumbles over time and the shoe becomes unwearable. I'll show y'all. I got it in the box because I don't want to get this all over the place. 1993 Jordan 8 playoffs. MJ Woody's in the playoffs. Like I said, I'm gonna be careful with these. I don't want this getting all over my room. You know about Jordan 8s, you know on the back how you can tell if it's OG or not. The red pull tab. All the OGs got the red pull tab. Every version after this, all the retros, they got the black pull tabs. Yeah, 93. Is it made in 93? Can y'all see that? 93, y'all. Talking, we talk. <laughs> they talking, y'all. They are talking. Whole midsole gone. Crumble. Look at that. Crumbling. This is even the, the bottom right here has like a hole in it. So I gotta completely take. I already have. I already have donuts. I already have a retro, I'm gonna swap with this pair. But that's the only thing, bro, with um, OGs, man. It's either you a real OG head and you just love the collecting sneakers, or you wanna wear them like me. I wanna wear all my sneakers, man. They just feel so much worth it when you when you finally swap them and you have a, a original pair of sneakers on your feet, man. That's, where, that's the reason why I do it, man. The materials is, Completely different from the retros, man. Super dope shoe though, bro. MJ was giving cats work in these. I think he scored like 55 on, on the Suns in the playoffs that one year versus uh, Charles Barkley, Kevin Johnson. Danny Ainge, man. You go back and look at these series, bro. He was, these was on his feet, man. Second to last, this is another pair I'm selling, y'all. Size 13, too big for me. I'm so mad though because this is a Timeless shoe. You rarely come across Nike sneakers that got the white swoosh and the black shoe. These are the Nike Slam Forces I showed y'all earlier. 
Super sad. My feet is already big, so I can't be walking around with 13s, y'all. I can wear these in 11. My other pair is 11. But I can't, I can't, I can't walk around with these. Super mad though, because I always wanted a black sneaker. I actually have another black sneaker I don't have right now that's being currently uh, soul swapped. Those are called the Nike Air Ballistic Forces. Those are the only pair of Nikes I have that's black and they got the white swoosh. I need me another pair. These would have been perfect to add the rotation, but these are boats. <laughs> Look at the boats, man. Look at these. It's bigger than my head. I don't know why Nike just stopped making shoes like this, bro. You'll see a lot of um, pics with Will Smith or icons back then with black shoes with white Nike swooshes. They're looking so timeless to me. I got the original box as well, y'all. Y'all hit me up for this. You know what I'm saying? This is the original box. See Nike Slam Force right there on sale. And the last, but not least, my grills. <laughs> Luckily, I got knowledge from a, a long time OG collector. He was like, do not swap these. Wrap them up somewhere, put them in your basement. Put them in your closet and do not wear them. These are the legendary 1988 Jordan 3s, man. Psst. Crazy. The bat tab still alive on there, man. Still alive. I gotta wrap these. I gotta stop playing, bro, and wrap these, bro, because this is gonna be worth some money in the future. A guy that re I reached out to me, he was trying to buy them from me at first, right? And luckily, man, he's a good dude. I was like, no, I'm not gonna sell these, I'm solving them. That'll be the worst decision you'll ever make. Because these are gonna be worth some money in the future. Chrome them, man. This is the original box, too. This bro, it took me so long to find these. And the dude I, I um, who was trying to buy them off me, he was like, bro, I've been looking for these shoes for a decade. And how I found them, I found them off eBay. I found it under another search. I was looking for some, some 1985 Nike conventions. And I happened to come across these, bro, and it's, the person who was listing them didn't know the actual year it was made. We actually put 1987. So I could see the elephant print is a lot thicker on the newer version. I think that wraps this video, y'all. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all go ahead and uh, let me know if I if I need to see somebody's um, sneaker collection. Y'all comment down below who I need to check out a vintage sneaker collection. But I think mine's pretty thorough, man. Just just given two years into, I think I did pretty good, man. Yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Till next time, I'm out. Wash your hands, man.